On today's episode, we make our Mini Cooper look a little more pretty. Welcome back to the Auto Obsessive Garage. Chadwick with you again for another installment of Project Mini Green Bean. That's our 2005 Mini Cooper S. On today's episode, guys, it's all about the cosmetics. We're being superficial as hell, and we just want to make our Mini Cooper S look as good as it drives. And let me tell you, spoilers, it drives very well. On this episode, we're going to do such things as cleaning up those headlights that are completely yellow and disgusting, we're gonna give the body a good polishing. That paint needs a little life breathed into it. And that rear bumper, which looks like it's gone through a few bumper car challenges, maybe some slight demolition derby duty, needs to be fully restored. We're gonna sand that down, paint it up, make it look good. So let's get in the garage and get this car a little less dirty. The headlights on the Cooper S are quite a bit yellowed, and there's no way we're gonna let that slide on this car. Headlights aren't too bright coming through. There's a lot of surface scuffing, as you can see. Not a good headlight lens, so we need to take care of that, buff that all the way out, and hopefully we can remove most of that yellowing. When I have lights that are this yellowed, this kind of scuffed up, I usually use a combination of cleaning products, Mother's Mag and Aluminum Polish, some Meguiar's Scratch X and Meguiar's Plastics. I'll usually go from the order of using the Mothers first, the Scratch next, and finish with the Plastics. And that'll usually give us a really clear lens. Sometimes, obviously, lenses are so bad that you need to sand them back, but I think these ones can be saved. Let's go ahead and do that this time. I'll be using a DA polisher for this. First up is the Mothers Mag and Aluminum Polish. I'm just gonna smear some of that. That's not the clarity we're looking for. You want a little more clear than that, even though we're already at a very good spot. Next up, I'm gonna use that scratch remover as it's pretty, pretty good at getting out extra scuffs. Let's see if this is gonna be strong enough to help us on that front. Okay, we're getting a little better there. Way more clearer than before. Time to hit it with my favorite, Meguiar's Plastics. Is it going to be perfect? No, but it's going to be a ton better than yellow and nasty and not projecting well with the headlight passing through? Probably. We're looking at a pretty clear lens here, guys. If you remember before how yellowed it was, you can actually see the three individual bulbs. Yeah, way better. Big difference to the front end look of the car when you have nice shiny headlights. Especially cool headlights with such character as the Mini has. Yeah, that looks fantastic. It's time to invest some sweat equity in the exterior of our Cooper S. It's decent overall. There's no paint fade or any clear coat peeling. It just needs some real love. It needs, it needs a spa day, if you will. So we're gonna hit this up with our, our usual suspects, the Meguiar's Compound Ultimate, the Ultimate Polish, then put some wax on there. We're gonna bring this British Racing Green back to life, and British Racing Green is the color to have on a Cooper. So let's get into it. We're gonna start right here on the hood. Even though I have a PDR guy coming next week to really take care of some of the small dents on the car, it's always good to have the car super clean. It makes other dents stand out, especially really small ones you can't see. So it's always good to have your car clean. Again, Meguiar's Ultimate Compound. This is gonna be our first one that really digs through all these imperfections and get this paint looking good again. Next, we'll be using the Meguiar's Ultimate Polish to shine up what we did with the compound. Lots of work here, guys. Now the hood has a real nice shine to it, and I only have to repeat this process on every other body panel. Ah, <sighs> joy. All right, well, let's get cracking. It's a good way to bring back the paint. Again, it's not super intrusive. You're not gonna damage your paint, and if you're faded or dirty, 
or have a lot of scuff, little minor scuffs, I find that compound and polish is the way to go. Especially with a deep color like this British Racing Green. So, yeah, you can tell I'm excited. Let's do the rest of the car. So I really battled back and forth whether or not I was gonna do the rear bumper on the Cooper S here. And I think I'm gonna, if you get in here, you can see there's a lot of really good bumper dings and they are deep all the way to the plastic here. So we're gonna have to take that down right to the plastic and primer, paint, and clear this bumper because it's just too rough. Oh, it's some good scrapes and scratches and stuff too, but the big issue is these huge bumper dings back here. A couple really good slams like right there. So, you know, there's no way to really touch up paint and make this look good. We're gonna have to go ahead, sand it all down, make it smooth, and get some fresh paint on there. Well, they say it gets worse before it gets better, and that's what we're taking in right now. You can see the bumper has kind of like a globe effect right now with all the beautiful blues and greens. But anyway, when you try to level off a body panel, this is when you really get to see how those imperfections really impacted the bumper. They might just look like little scratches on the exterior, but once you get through that paint and everything, you can see that these are pretty decent impacts. So we're gonna continue to grind at them. I went to 150 grit, which is pretty aggressive. That's a lot better instead of burning up all your other pads. I'm gonna then do a 320 and then probably a 600 before we put the primer on, but you can see just how much work you need to do. And all these little bumper taps really do impact your car's bumper shape, deform the bumper and get to that paint. So don't worry, this is gonna look amazingly better than we started out with. At least that's what I'm telling myself. Let's keep plugging away, guys. So I went from 150, 320, and the final was 600. You wanna go over the entire bumper, everything you intend to paint, because that's gonna really help that paint adhere to the final product. So this is what our bumper looks like. Doesn't look too pretty right now, but I bet when we get some primer and paint on there, it's gonna come out pretty good. So yep, final pass was with 600. The next thing we're gonna to have to do, alcohol prep the entire bumper, allow that alcohol to dry, and then we'll put down a coat of really good filler primer. Time to put some primer on our bumper. Don't worry about all the color showing through now. We're gonna put quite a few coats of primer on there to help with paint adhesion. So just go ahead and put it on kind of thick. No runs, of course, but put it on pretty thick and we're gonna let that dry. We'll do another coat. We've got a great uniform cover of primer on the bumper of the Cooper S at this time. We're gonna let that dry up, let it mature. It needs to grow up a little bit. But seriously, we put it on so thick, I'm gonna let it cure up for like a half hour or so. It's a good temp in the garage. It's right around 78 degrees, so it should cure up pretty nicely. And then we're gonna throw our first coat of paint on there. So, making progress. With our primer dry to the touch, it's time to apply some paint. We're gonna apply this in very light coats at first, and then once it starts to tack up and cover the primer areas, we'll go ahead and put thicker coats as we go. Probably gonna put about three to four coats of paint on here. Oh, British Racing Green is so awesome looking. Again, doesn't have to be perfect coverage. These first coats are gonna be extremely light. Yep, you can see where we're going here. This is gonna look awesome. Love this color. All right, we got a really good coat four coats actually of the British Racing Green paint on our Cooper S rear bumper. So it's gonna be it's gonna be time to apply our clear coat. And I like to do four to five coats of clear coat, put on there nice and thick, protect that paint. And that's what really brings the shine out. You know, your paint's gonna be kinda shiny, but when you put that clear on there, that's when it really comes to life. Let's go ahead and apply our clear at this time. It's time to spray our clear and what we're going with today, the tried and true 2K clear, love this stuff. Really, really good stuff. Really hardy, holds up the sun fade. If you use cheap clear, you're gonna see it. So let's go ahead and spray this on. We use pretty heavy coats. Probably, like I said, five coats going down on this bumper. Let's get it done. And just like that, we have a shiny rear bumper on our Cooper S. Looking real good. Put about five coats of clear on there. So we're gonna let that really dry up 
And then probably 24 to 48 hours, we can use a buffer and polisher, put some compound to it, and just really, really make it shine, even though it's extremely shiny right now. And the paint matches the rest of the car perfectly. So, all right, let's let that dry and come back and polish it. Now our Mini Cooper S is starting to look just a little bit more respectable. Seriously though, I'm pretty happy with how it's turning out. This is one sharp looking car.